All right, we are live. Welcome to On Set from my house. Oh, good, the heat turned off. Uh, <laughs> we had a big snowstorm here in, in New York, so uh, I wasn't able to make it to the studio, but we wanted to go live for you guys anyway. So here I am in my home, and we're going to shoot some product photography. I think that's always something fun to do when you are trapped in your house in a snowstorm, or for other reasons, I guess. And also, um, this is the kind of thing, like a lot of times people say, oh, you know, there's not a lot of work or this is that. There's always work shooting product. And it's something that can really help you develop your skill. So I'm gonna start off by kind of shooting in kind of the more common ways, and then we'll start really messing around with what we're gonna do. Um, let me just set this up so I don't have to keep going back to it. Boop, good, that should be good. Okay, actually I'll do this one. I'm just playing a video game here, guys. Don't worry about it. All right, good. So I'll go back to that when the time comes. But let's just take a quick look at some things here. Let's see. All right, so oh, we're on the side. All right, so I'm going to use my my dado light today, so a constant light. Um, this is a tungsten light. I'll put this here so you guys can see better. And basically, it's 150 watts, or it's, it's 150 watts. It, pu it pulls about the equivalent of 300 watts of um, you know output. So when you're using it, um, oop, text, I'm getting a text, boop, oh, to make it a touch louder. Okay, I think I'm as loud as I can be, so I will just talk louder. Okay, so um, basically this is very efficient. So we just did a, a demo last week, yeah, it was last week, where we used inexpensive lighting for strobe. And when you're talking about strobe lights, what you're kind of paying for most of the time, I think top of my head's cut off, that's okay, um, is like um, durability, efficiency, reliability. When it comes to hot lights, you're paying for that same kind of stuff, but also there's a lot of technology in these. So I really like the dados. Um, you can do some of the things we're gonna do, at least the most basic stuff with more or less any hot light. I am using a tungsten light because uh, actually Seth found this. I had left it at the event space uh, at Arama. Uh, this is one of my extra ones. So I was like, let me bust out this old guy. If you've been watching my channel at all, you see that I'm talking about a lot of kind of shots I've been doing over the years, like shots I like a lot, and almost all of them I use these data lights. They're just really great. Um, what makes them different is that they, they've they got a spherical lens on the front, so the light that comes out of it is really, really kind of even and smooth. So we'll see that as we create some some images here. Uh, this is just this is the last light diffuser. I just put it here so you guys can see because all my messy books behind me. Um, the, it's gonna get dark in here. We'll play around. I'm gonna to try to show you guys as I go with this. We might bust out a flash at some point, but I'm gonna to try to primarily work with the with the data light to kind of show you guys. Now, let's take a, a second to talk about hard light and soft light, because that's going to matter here, right? So our data light is, I didn't need that. It's about two and a half inches. It's gonna be hard uh, for most things, right? If I'm not going to put it right up against something, it's going to produce a hard light. Now, hard light produces sudden shadow drop-off. Um, and, of course, it's abrupt. It's a hard shadow, right? Soft light creates a more gradual shadow. If you're shooting product, sometimes you want that hard light because it will bring up texture. Other times, not so much, right? It kind of depends on what you're going for. So we'll modify our light. The way you make it softer is you make it bigger. The other thing we're going to use here is, you can see here I have set up a roll of paper. Um, I got a couple other ones to show you. Here's a blue one. This is the the 26 the 26 inch Savage paper. I get every time I do one of these, I get tons of questions about this. I put a link in the description uh, to like the generic like page to search for this. But you can get them in all different colors, you know. And again, they're easy to store. Another thing you can do is if you're using bigger rolls of paper for let's say shooting people, when you get down to the end of the roll where you can't really use much of it anymore, you can just take a saw and just cut it, and make shorter rolls. Um, that's what I usually do in the studio. Okay. So let's get to this. I'm gonna to try to watch the chat, so I will periodically stop to watch the chat. Um, say, hey Daniel, hey guys. Um, Connecticut, did you get with, did it with snow as well? <laughs> Full-time product photographer, all right, good. Cool, 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 Montreal. <laughs> all right, so let's do this. I am tethered into Capture One as always, so we're gonna uh, both look through the camera and we're gonna look uh, as we create the images. Um, I'm going to, uh, let's switch over to here. Actually, before I do that, let's do this. The first thing I'm going to photograph, because I pulled it up first. So, of course, you know, I heard about the snowstorm after I was already home. So, I didn't go out. A lot of times when I do these product things, I'll buy some things to photograph. Here, I just took some things around the house. 
uh, to give you kind of a variety of things. So this is actually an old compass. So I think we're gonna photograph this first. This could be really fun. Um, I also have a book and a few other things. So we're gonna start with this. This was given to me by Annie Cahill. Thank you, Annie. One of, if not the best person in the world. Um, all right, here we go. I'm gonna switch here. I'm gonna switch to my Capture One so you guys can see. And you should also be able to see a side view so we see what's going on here. Now, of course, because I'm using a constant light source, the light in the space is gonna affect my shot, so I'm gonna kill that light in a second. Uh, let me just make sure there's nothing else I need. Australia, Netherlands, hey guys. Okay, South Carolina, you probably didn't get any snow. Whew. All right, let's do this, guys. It's a little bit of a slower pace here. Um, I'm going to, just like always, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll show you guys where to look at the camera. All right, so I'm in Capture One. I can do this live preview. We're looking through the camera. It's a black frame, basically. There's none of this light's really affecting our shot, so I probably can leave this on for now. We'll see. Uh, you, we can see if I start to go with a slower shutter, we'll start to be able to see the image. So I think if we stay a few stops under, we should be good. What it comes down to is how bright the data is, relatively speaking. So let's turn that bad boy on and let's see what we get. So I'm going to start off with not the data by itself, because I think when you're shooting product photography, most people are going to want to, no, just walked out of the camera. Most people are going to want to use something like a softbox. This is a one foot square softbox. So for a small product, it's, it's totally fine. Also, I decided to just use this little tiny portable stand for this, as opposed to using you know, like a like C stand or anything that we normally would use, because I want to keep this kind of uh, as simple as possible. You know, maybe it doesn't, everybody doesn't have uh, C stands to use, even though I'm using one right here, clearly. Um, all right, so let's fire this thing up. This light, as I mentioned, is tungsten. It is dimmable. Um, but we'll start with it up all the way and I'm going to position it. Now, whenever we're doing product photography, I'm generally going to want to position. I'm generally going to want to position. Um, okay. Let me leave that like that. I'm generally going to want to position the, uh, the light somewhat behind. This creates a shadow in front of the object which gives you some more dimension. One of the, the, the things that people do a lot in product photography when they're first starting that's bad is they shoot with the light from the front. They're thinking, well, I want to light the front of the object. So they hit it in the front with light and what you get is a shadow behind it. And that shadow behind it just looks, to people's eyes, it just looks very natural. If, you, if you're not into product photography, start looking now, you'll see almost all product photography is lit from the back because it just looks nicer to have that drop shadow in front. It gives you that little bit of uh, three dimensionality. In this case, I'm not going to put it directly behind because I don't have a C stand to, to get myself in position to get it directly behind. Um, so I'm just going to kind of come from the side of it. Again, this is a, a one foot square softbox. It is double diffused. This is a tungsten light. So I'm going to, we can see through the camera currently, right? So we can see what we're getting. Um, all right. So I'm going to, I'm going to open up to 5.6. I think that's probably fine. Let me focus on it. Here we go. And I'm going to, I'm always going to want to keep my ISO low if I can, because that's going to give me, you know, uh, the, the best quality. Before I do this, let me kind of jump over here and change my white balance. I'm going to go into my white balance. I'm going to go into my camera settings. Currently it's on sunny. I'm going to change it to incandescent to start with. Okay. All right, there we go. Ah. That looks terrible, right? We're creating something. I want to create something that's moody. I don't want it to look right. So I actually think I might leave it um, in sunny. Or maybe we'll do a custom. Let's go back to sunny. That's a little too yellow. So we'll, we'll figure out something we want in the middle. So let's get our first shot first. So I'm going to frame this thing up. I'm just going to put it in the middle for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a judgment call here. You know, I'm using a constant light. I have a meter in my camera, of course. And actually, the camera meter right now says this is the proper exposure. I actually think I'm probably going to want to give it a little more juice. But let's, I'm going to raise the camera a smidge. Because I want to see inside the compass, right? So I'm going to raise that up a bit. And I'm going to come down. Oh, right. Thank you. Thanks, Seth. 
even though I was constantly looking at myself, I could see this, even though I have a camera to show me. Okay, thank you, Seth. Whew, okay. All right, so here we are, sorry. I'm looking down at it. I didn't show you guys with the other color, but I'll show you in a second. All right, so this is our base exposure. I'm just gonna, this is a 20th of a second, 5.6. Uh, I'm, I'm in capture one. Uh, even though I'm on a tripod, I might shake it. So I'm just gonna use capture one to take the photo. And this will be the place that we'll start, right? Nice and simple. Oops, that's our, that's our white balance, by the way. If I do it correct to the paper, that's what it looks like. I don't really like that. So I'm gonna go back to this, and then I think I'm gonna correct it a little bit. I'm just using my eye to see where I like it. You know, again, if I was selling this and it had to match an exact color, then I probably would uh, do a, a, you know, a white balance target, but I wanna create kind of an interesting shot, so. Okay, cool. All right, so let's take a look at this thing and let's think about it for a second. Number one, I just, I just laid it down, right? It might be relevant who made this thing, which is right here. Also, I can see words here that are partially cut off. So let's look at our composition for a second and let's change our object. I'm gonna go here. So you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna turn this so we can actually see the words Mariner Compass, because that's probably important. Okay. Oh, that's not how you do it. I was going to punch in for you guys, but I did it in the wrong spot. There we go. Right. So if that's going to be important, we're going to have to watch our focus on that. So let me just turn this like this. Boop. I'm also going to want to read it. So maybe I'll put it here. Let's come in. All right. I'm going to focus near the top of it. And we'll take a shot. We'll see what we like here. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. Of course, because the compass needle is always going to turn, I can't actually turn it that far because otherwise it'll cover the words. So, science is working against me, guys. There we go. That's better. And, you know, now I can't read this because depth of field. So let's, let's give it more depth of field, right? Again, we're on a tripod. We don't really have a reason to to care about our shutter speed. So let's go ahead and give ourselves, let's say F11. And then I'm gonna come down here to let's say a sixth of a second. And there we go. Okay. Sorry guys, I, the phone shut off so I'm not sure if people are talking to me or not. Yeah, it's pointed to the cup, exactly. <laughs> right, to make the whole product in focus sharp, right? So what you would need to do, um, okay, so if you're shooting something small, one of the one of the best tips to, to get it all sharp is to actually shoot further away and then just crop in, you know, um, if that's what you want to do. The other thing is you have to think about your angle, right? Uh, focus angles, you could also be more above it, right? I could go up over top of it. That would also make it all in focus. It kind of depends on what you want to do. I, personally, I, I like the, I want it out of focus. Um, so I'm not going to do that, but that's what you would do. You wouldn't just keep, keep closing down your aperture. At, at a certain point, you're not going to have what you want. What I'm trying to decide is what I want to be the main focus. Since I can't read this anyways, because the needle's gonna cover it, I've decided now that it's more important to focus on this. Now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to myself, you know what? Um, it's in the shade, the shadow, right? So I've got a couple of options here. I could either, probably the simplest thing is gonna to be to reflect some light back on top of it. This is a, um, this is also from Data Light. This is a light stream number four. So it's basically just a reflector. And what we can do with this is now we can see the front of it. So you can see this here, guys. This is basically, let me do it big so you guys can see. So this is essentially like the, more or less the equivalent of like a, like a mat board. Like you see us use a foam core board. This is basically like that. The advantage of using something that's like this is that it's always gonna be the same, right? It's designed for it, also it can be mounted. So I just happen to have these. Um, there's different levels, actually just let me show you. This is the number four, which is the most matte. And then we've got the number one, which is the most shiny. I'm not sure you can actually tell the difference. 
Yeah, you can see. The shiny one is more like a mirror. And actually, I'll use that one for you guys to see the difference. I think it's going to be too much for what we're doing here. But depending on the look you're going for, you can see it pops it up. It's more specular. But you can also see we're getting a secondary shadow here. Huh, actually, though, I kind of like it. I'm liking it. So now we've got this. And we got that, right? Nice and flat. If you were trying to sell this, again, just making a nice shot of it. This is okay because it's, it's a... Um, I should probably just leave this here. I'll try to use it again. Oh, actually, I kind of like that. What I'm going to actually do here is make this a little nicer. I'm bringing the... All right, that's with the more shiny board. I'm bringing the, the, uh, the one reflector in on the side. Just to inst you're not going to get that nice um, fully lit top, but you can see how we have a little edge here. So I like that. So what I'm actually going to do is take the really shiny one, the number one, which is a mirror, right? And I'm going to put that over here. Then I'm going to take this one and put it up above. There we go. Keep in mind too, guys, that when I'm shooting something on white like this, I don't necessarily care that this thing's in my shot. You're going to find that a lot in product photography. We're going to crop it out. You know, I'm not that worried about that. In fact, if I had a longer lens, I would just zoom in, but I do not. So this is what I got. So now, now you can see that we've created from, you know, what was essentially this at the beginning, right? We've created more depth here. you know, by doing two different things. We've reflected light onto the flat area here, and then we've also added an extra one to add a little highlight there. You see where this does not have that. We might even be able to, if I was extra good, I might be extra good. Yeah, let me try that. I basically have just moved it in a little bit. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing. Notice too, guys, that this is not, um, this right here where the compass is, is glass, right? You can see it's scratched up. Obviously, it's an old compass, but we're not getting the light reflected in it. That's one thing people ask a lot about glasses and stuff. It's all about the angle. You know, it's all about where you put your light. The, the, only, the, the way that I would get a reflection, I can actually see with my eyes, if I went really low, I might get a reflection from the, the glass. But at this angle, you know, the, uh, the light's coming in. So you can't actually see, you know, the light's reflecting back this way. So actually, let me see. Yeah, to see the softbox, I'd have to put the camera over here somewhere. You know, I'm not sure if you can see my hands or not. Okay. Questions about that one? Let me see. Sorry this keeps closing. I thought I had a better system than this. Compass of uh, small aperture gives you more depth. That is true. Yeah, you can use the uh, magnet. Yeah, that's true. Uh, focus stacking. Yeah. I mean, I'll talk about focus stacking. I'm not going to do it. Um, the thing about focus stacking is that so I had a question about focus stacking, so I'll just quickly answer it. So some cameras, or you can do it yourself, well, essentially, you lock down the tripod and you pick a range and it will it'll take a series of photos at slightly different focuses and then smoosh them together so you get more depth of field. Personally, I feel like that looks very artificial. If you're shooting um, a product that actually has to be fully, fully in focus front to back for whatever reason, you know, especially something that's more technical, then okay, that's a technique to use. I think that if you start shooting things that are small and they're completely in focus all the time, you lose a lot of interest. So I personally like to have the depth of field be more shallow, but that's again, up to you. I wouldn't, let's say for instance, on this one, I'm at F11. So let me go here, <laughs> touch screen this thing. The problem when half your things are touch screen and half are not. Like if we look here, right, I'm at F11. If I went to, let's say F4, let's see. Focus in the right spot. Focus just on the name. 
right? What we could get, like our reflector, there it is. You know, now like like the 1885 is not in focus. So to me, that's too shallow. See how it's in focus here? You've got to, you've got to pick your battles, you know, what you think is the most interesting. So here the 1885 is out of focus. The back of the compass is more out of focus than it is here. And what I would recommend, actually, until you get a, a feel for how you like things to be, I would shoot them at various uh, focus spots in, in uh, depth of field to see what works best for you. You know, that's kind of how I would do that. Okay, so that's cool. You know, and you can use this flat light. Yeah, you can use this flat light for a lot of things. Um, let me just swap it out with another object. Let's say I have this. This is a spoon. I got this with some coffee I bought, actually. They gave me a spoon. So, if we take the spoon, we put it in here. You know, and again, now some people might look at this and be like, oh, uh, Daniel, you can see this reflection here, right there. That's bad. We don't like reflections. But the thing is, is that that's how you know it's round. You want reflection. You know, if we kill all the reflection in something, you won't understand that it's round. It will just be flat and boring. So the trick is to make sure that you have enough dynamic range that you're filled in enough so that the reflection doesn't lose detail. So with this, we're throwing a, kind of a lot of shadow. We're going to definitely need some fill here. And what you can do, if you're cheap like I am, save your paper. Right? And I'm just taking literally the, the rest of the roll. And I'm going to use that. It actually kind of forms a little bit of visual interest in the front as well. We'll end up, like I say, cropping it out, but we can bring this in and use the paper to fill in. Right? So we get a little bit more fill in the shadow. And you can see here this highlight still has detail. That's showing us the spoon is round. You know, like I said, that actually you can use the paper to fill in, or again, we can use a proper reflector. I guess I'm going to use this a lot. Again, this is the number four. This one is the same equivalent of using, let's say, like a Brooklyn reflector that you've seen us use a bunch of times. It should also be noted that when you're photographing, I mean, I, I would say even people and stuff, but when you're photographing product, get everything set before you start putting in reflectors. Like, get your main exposure set. You don't, want to, you don't want to base your exposure off uh, a shot with a reflector in it. You want the reflector to fill in the shadows. It's not part of your main light source. The other thing we could do is if the shadow was a bit much, we could bring our light up higher and point it down, right? We'll, yeah, let me switch to here so you guys can see. Okay, so if I bring my light up higher, you'll see, you'll see how the shadow changes, right? This is going to change the direction of the shadow. See how it's getting closer to the spoon? Obviously, it's darker now, too, but that's something I'll deal with in a second. But you see how now the shadow is getting uh, under, more underneath the spoon. So if you like that better, I'll open up a little bit so you guys can see the shutter. See how that creates a little bit of a... Uh, now, the only problem with this, in my mind, is that... Well, first of all, it's out of focus. Um, is that this highlight on the spoon is becoming smaller, right? Because the light's further away, the light's becoming harder. And to me, that doesn't really complement the spoon. What you might do, if you had a C-stand, or want to take the time to rig it, or you want to just hold it in your hand, is you could bring the, the light in really above it like this. And I could literally just make an adjustment. I'm just adjusting my shutter speed now. And you can see how that highlight is. Look at how, look at how smooth that highlight is. See how it's more highlight? Less. So we bring this in, nice and close. I'm going to focus kind of... Let's see. I'll focus right at the edge of the spoon. That looks like a good spot. I'll bring this a little more forward, actually. Good. So I'm, fe I'm feathering this off so that the background gets a little bit of a drop shadow on it. And now we've got a little bit of a smoother light, right? I mean, clearly, you're not going <laughs> to hold that in your hand all day. So... 
If you like that better, you just need to suspend the light over top of it. And we can see how this highlight is still here, but that it's nice and smooth, right? Okay. Sorry guys, I normally turn my notifications off, but because I'm by myself here. Oh, oh, seeing a lot. Uh, so focus settings can't move the object. Right, exactly, it wouldn't move the object. Can you use kitchen foil? Of course. Uh, am I close? No, I'm not actually focusing closer to the, where I'm focused on this is on the spoon. Oh, I guess part of the spoon's cut off in that image like that. Hold on a second, let me move this over. Okay, I'll put it up here. Ah, where should I be? I'll be over here. Sorry, guys, I'm redoing my picture in picture. There we go. So you can see it better. Uh, I'm focused like here, kind of in the middle. Because I don't want, remember that your depth of field extends in both directions. Um, it extends both close to the camera and further out. Close to the camera, you usually have less. But I don't want to focus right here at the front of the spoon because then by, by the time I reach the back of the spoon, it'd be too out of focus for my taste. So. Uh, I, I'm focused more or less in the center, so I'm right, I'm right here. Actually, you can use this tool in Capture One, by the way, to see your focus all the time. So, and we can see where it's where it's coming and going here. You know, it's slightly out at the front. So the key is here, right? Like, what's the most important part of a spoon, right? The part that scoops up the the liquid. So that's where I'm focused. You know, that that's kind of how I make that choice. I think if this entire spoon was in focus, it'd be boring. Um, also, I feel like if the background was just plain white, it'd be boring. But it really depends on the client and, and who you're shooting for, right? This is a little bit more of an editorial shot, a little bit more flavor, um, in a sense. Oh, move the camera on a rail. That's interesting. Focus stacking is the bread and butter. I don't know about that. I've done quite a bit of product photography and I've never focus stacked in my life. So it may be something you're selling, but it's not something that everybody uses. In fact, what I generally find is these rules that people throw out are usually tend to be for the, the kind of the most, most base clients. You know, clients that, that have money and want to do stuff creative, they don't force you to do these techniques that are trendy. Speaking of trendy, all right, I know you guys didn't know this about me. You know, Seth is a big video game guy, right? So I also have a video game. This is the 1983, I think 1983, um, Mattel Electronics Dungeons and Dragons uh, game. So again, I'm just using the same basic uh, lighting for a few things before we get started here. Nothing super, super fancy. We're kind of staying basic here. Um, and part of the reason why is I just want to show you how a very simple lighting can work for a lot of products. You can really crank it out. You, know, you can get a lot done in a short period of time with really, really simple, simple light. You know, and once again, we just need to choose how we want this thing to look. So let me switch. Oh, I keep wanting to touch that. So I'm going to come up above this a little bit. And I'm going to move it closer to the camera. Because again, in this case, I want most of it, if not all of it, to be in focus. I don't want to shoot um, like a detail, like a, a out of focus detail. I want to kind of make it more or less in focus. I don't want to be directly above it. You can do that too, of course. That looks pretty good. I'm going to level my camera and then I'll move the product to be straight as opposed to the other ways around. I have the grid up on my screen, by the way, which I think helps a lot. Actually, I can, I don't know if you'll see it there, but let me do it here. There we go. This way we can, yeah, okay. 
So you can do that in Capture One. I just put the grid on. I also have it on the back of my camera. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to, again, I want most of it in focus, I said. So I'm going to go to F8. That seems like a good place to start. And I'm just going to adjust my shutter speed to get it where I want it to be. Now, in this case, I think what I want is, yeah, I don't want the screen to reflect. I kind of like the way the light's playing across it. I like the little bit of shadow. It adds a little flavor to it. I'm going to focus, you know, a right kind of dead center, which should give me enough depth of field in both directions. And I'm just going to start here and make a shot. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, the cursor's a tiny bit out, moves a tiny bit out. Okay, so I could close down or I could move my camera back would be my two options here. Um, I think I'll close down. I'll go to F11. So I'm at a quarter of a second, so I'll go F11 and half a second. Um, now I'm going to use Capture One again to, to shoot because half a second I don't really want to be holding the camera. That's better. You know, it's still out a tiny bit at the back. Again, you could do a lot of things. Focus stack, close down, back the camera up is probably what I would do. I'm also considering lifting the, the product up a little bit. Let's see. Nah, I don't like that. You can see actually how you get the reflection of the light at certain angles. See, I don't like that because I, I like my drop shadow and I don't want the drop shadow to have that weird look to it. So I'm going to do this. I think I like this angle. Like this. I'm going to bring this in. Okay, but what I am going to do is fill in the shadow a bit. And again, I think with this one, I actually might use the more uh, mirror-like reflector. It is going to create a secondary shadow up there, but it's very mild, so we'll see see how we like it. Oh, I'm going to close this. Yeah, there we go. Again, it leaves that, um, we're leaving our depth in there. We can see what we want. And of course, obviously, I can get rid of this grid if we. Um, do now, here, by the way, guys, um, I've got a custom white balance going. I'm just going to switch to incandescent to make it as clean as possible. I still don't feel like that's good. So I'm going to come over here. And yeah, that looks better to me. Again, if this was for a client, I would shoot a, a color target. I'm just doing it by eye because it's kind of just a fun way to do it. There we go. Nice and simple. That's level one. Level one for you beginner uh, video gamers. I'm an expert, so I might actually go to level two. Okay, let's see what we got here. Right. How about reflective objects? Well, everything I've shot so far has been reflective. Three buttons on it, exactly. <laughs> right, I don't have a metal spoon, unfortunately, to show you, but it was basically the same thing. Like a time capsule. <laughs> no, I don't have old stuff. Seth has all the old stuff. Um, actually, I might have something more shiny. Let me see what I have that's reflective. But this is actually reflective. It's a, Well, it's plastic. It's not glass, but it's like a glass screen. Um, all right, so let's see. Oh, what are we looking at now? Hold on. I don't know what you guys are looking at right now. You're looking at that. That's fine. You can look at that. Enjoy it. Um, I think I'm getting bored with basic stuff, but let's do one more. One more basic thing. This is a candle. Let's go here. Again, just going to throw the live view on. For this one, I'm going to get lower. You know, part of this, again, is just... The process of just setting up your one light and then just kind of messing around... Uh, with different products to see how they reflect and how they deal with stuff. What you don't want to be is, is like on set with a client there and trying to figure out how to light things. So this is a good exercise if you're getting into product photography or if you just don't do it as much as, you know, as you'd like to or... Yeah, that's kind of neat. All right, so, I mean, clearly we've got um, that green tape back there, which I'll get rid of. my ProGaff chroma key tape. This is an owl candle. If you want to see how to shoot a candle, watch Gavin's last video that came out today. 
All right. Latest. I shouldn't say last, because sometimes people interpret last as the, the final, but the latest video, I should say. Uh, this guy, I'm shooting more straight on. I don't need to be at f11. I'm going to go down to 5.6, and I'm going to go to an eighth of a second. That should keep my exposure the same. I kind of like that uh, line of darkness going back there. So I think I'm going to leave that. I, mean, I think I might leave the owl as it is, to be honest with you. Um, he's got a nice little shadow. I'm going to put him over here. You know. Good. There he is. Hey, Mr. Owl. How many licks does it take to get to the center of the Tootsie Roll? Tootsie Pop Roll. Uh, oh, yeah. Look at that guy. Uh... All right, so, I, you know, you can compose him wherever you want. I mean, I, I like him on that side, but if you would like to put him on this side, you may. I will not hold it against you. And, of course, obviously, you could light the candle. I, didn't, I don't have my fire extinguisher here, so I'm not going to light this candle on a piece of paper in the middle of my house. Yeah, easy, right? Same thing. He's basically backlit. I don't even know if he needs a reflector, but, again... The more reflectors you use, the more you get paid. Right? We set up our light first, then we add a reflector. We don't, we don't incorporate the reflectors. It's just like extra lights. We don't incorporate them until we're ready to use them. As far as the background, you know, with that line on the background, you can control that. Oh, let me do this so you guys can see. Right, We can control where that falls any number of ways. We could raise the light. That's going to change it slightly. We could turn the light clearly. That's going to change it a lot. Part of it is just that's where the paper ends. We could sweep the paper. We could move the light this way. We see how it gets closer. Right, If we want, let's say, half and half. I don't have any kind. You could flag it, of course. That'd be the other way to do it. Actually, the other thing I could do, since I don't have a flag, is I could take this diffuser off. And what that's going to do is give me more of an edge to the softbox. So I can turn it more like that. And again, that's changing where that line is in the back. I kind of like that. Interestingly enough, even though I took the diffuser off so the, the light is brighter, um, because I angled it, it doesn't, um, doesn't look like it needs a different exposure. The exposure still looks pretty good. So let's go in here. There he is. Right? We move the angle slightly. And now you've almost got three layers of, of light. I can also do this. I'm sliding the mirror back so that it actually uh, encompasses the entire, entire owl. So you don't, so it's, it's cleaner. You see how that is? Uh... You see here, you got like, you can see where the reflector is hitting. Here, you can see that I, I encompass the whole area with the reflector, so it's, it's, uh, it's cleaner. Yeah, I like that better. That's a better owl. Let's see. Oh, boy. All right, let's see. Uh, going to bed. Uh-oh. Let's see. Let me help myself. What kind of small softbox? This is a dado light. I think they call it mini baby, if I'm not mistaken. It is a one foot by one foot uh, softbox. So it, uh, it's heat resistant. You can also get one foot by one foot boxes for strobes um, if you uh, don't need it to be heat resistant. But this is a really nice box. It is one of my favorite boxes. I'm going to lower this a bit. I'm liking the owl, actually. Hey, Mr. Owl. Well, he picks up every little bit of dust that you can... Okay, burnt myself there, if you saw that. All right, I'm going to lo lower the light a little bit, change the angle. Okay. There we go. That's a nice shot. Now, here we're getting that double shadow thing because we're filling, so I might tilt my reflector forward. Even if I do that, we're still going to have it. In fact, it's there even without uh, the reflector. So, what I could do, though... 
try something here. I moved the reflector around. Yeah, see that? I moved it around in the back. See how I'm getting a highlight on the back of it? Let me try something. No, I don't think this opens up wide enough for me to do it. No, it doesn't. Okay. I was going to try to get fancy, but we couldn't pull it off. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to only use one light here, if at all possible, because I feel like that's usually a good option. Okay, so let's get funky. I think I'm done being basic. Do I always use a constant light? It's not an LED light, it's a tungsten. Uh, okay, so do I always use a constant light? No, but I like it for product photography if I can because it's just really simple. And since products aren't moving, uh, you don't have to worry so much about stopping the action. So it can be really, really fast and easy because especially if you're new to lighting to just see where the lights are. Now, there's a lot of downsides, of course, to using uh, constant light. The biggest downside is that um, you got to have good control of your space, right? Like it's basically nighttime here and I have only the small light that's lighting me, which I can actually kill if I need to. And, and I might actually need to do that at some point. It didn't really seem to be affecting my shot much. So, so I didn't kill it, but um, let's see if what it's doing now. Yeah, it, it actually is affecting the shot now a bit. So if we look at this, right, you see, that's actually affecting our shot. It's filling in a little bit. I'm not that worried about it. Uh, it actually is helping us a little bit, but let's kill that and let's see what the difference is. So Alexa, turn off reading lamp. All right, now it's dark. Okay. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah, well, we can, I can definitely see the difference. I'll take a shot and show you guys. Of course, I've moved the mirror now to a different spot, but if we just look at the front of the of the owl, look how much darker it is. So in our case, it was fine because it was nice, clean, professional light, but if there was some kind of weird light that you didn't want there, that's going to be a problem with a constant light source. So we do need to be wary of that. I mean, clearly I can bring the light back in with a reflector, so I'm not overly worried. Get a good focus on Mr. Owl. There we go. I heard a ding. There we go. We brought it back. So there you go, right? That's one of the, of course, I don't know what I'm looking at now. <laughs> you guys can barely see me out yet. Oh, I'm, I'm lit up down here. So that's the that's thing, right? Strobe, it wouldn't matter. I could be doing this in the middle of the day. Could I use the camera flash? No, I wouldn't use the camera flash. Right. Your Alexa just responded. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I actually normally have my reading lamp plugged into that, but I plugged this other light in there so I could do that. I've been waiting all day to do this, so it's, it's very exciting for me. Alexa, turn on reading lamp. Okay. All right, let's get funky, right? So that's cool. It's all good. We're chilling out. We're doing that. I was going to do a book, but I think I've done enough. Let's get a little funkier. One of the reasons why I am using the data light is because it has the ability to really shape the light. Just about anything you could throw a softbox on, right? Softbox is common. I mean, this is a nice softbox, but softbox is pretty common. But what makes this light special is its ability to focus. So let's play around a little bit with getting some hard focused light and really kind of seeing what we can create. Actually, I'll start with the owl. Um, remember, uh, the hard light is going to create basically abrupt, hard shadow, right? That hard shadow is going to give us a texture. It's going to really make things pop. It's going it to allow us to, to bring it into a different spot. I am going to use one thing right off the bat, though. I'm going to use a barn door. Um, if, you're, if you've got any kind of a light that's, that has the ability to have a barn door, uh, I would recommend getting them. That's just going to allow you to control where the light spills. So that is probably one of the things you're going to want because we can narrow our light down here. Hold on, let me get, let's get this going. All right, so clearly it's way more light because there's no softbox there anymore. We'll stay at 5.6, I'm gonna bring my shutter up. Yeah, let's start there, okay. And we can really see the difference, right, between basically what was a, a soft light with a softbox and a hard light here. Let me just do the hard light by itself, right? So what we're getting now is, if we look at our shadow, 
versus let's say this one, which again, doesn't have the fill. Soft light creates this kind of soft shadow edge, right? Hard light creates hard shadow edge. It's something we can use to create, right? And we can, we can actually, I'm gonna probably use this, this uh, oops, I'm not on the right thing. All right, everybody who's writing in the chat right now. <laughs> okay, let me go back, sorry. So this one on top, this is the, I need to make that screen bigger. This is the soft light, and we can see soft shadow edge, right? That's what soft light does. The hard light creates hard shadow edge, right? Also, in this case, our soft light happens to be diffused. So if we look at our, our highlights, they're pretty mellow versus the highlights in this one, which are going to be really bright because diff diffusion versus specular. Okay. Sorry about that. Took me a second. So I'm going to actually switch over now and use the... Um, first of all, I'm going to kill the light in the space so that we're not... Even though I don't think it's doing anything now. Uh, Alexa, turn off reading lamp. Okay. All right, so here's where we're at. Let me take a, let me take a shot to start. We're at a 40th of a second, 6.3. Okay, now the owl is in the spotlight, right? He's no longer just hanging out, chilling. Now there's something going on, right? What is going on with this owl? Why is he in this spotlight? I'm not sure. He must have done something. So let's get in. I, I changed my composition a little bit. I want to see the, the, the tip of the, uh, of the candle wick. Now... We've already got probably, I guess, partially, at least partially because this white paper is bouncing back. So when you shoot on white paper, right, especially the angle I'm doing, what's happening is the light is bouncing, you know, off this white paper right here and coming back in and filling the owl a bit, right? So I can also add a reflector right here. This is just some of the extra white paper that, uh, that I have. Let's put that there, right? You can also use it as a snoot. Right, so this is gonna give us some fill. Again, still hard light because we have the hard edges, but now we've got fill. And that didn't, you know, that didn't cost anything. That was just an extra piece of paper. That fill happens to be soft fill because it's bouncing off the white paper, right? If we wanna do a hard fill, I could bring the, the mirror in. So the mirror is gonna kick back light. In fact, this case is gonna throw another shadow. If we're not careful, well, it'll probably throw it no matter what because it's so much. Let's see if we can get it to not do it so much. All right, so it's so hard, it's gonna throw another shadow. I'll just take it so you guys can see. Like, this would be too much, right? That's gonna to be too much. You don't want two shadows. You can see how nice that is, but it's, you know, nice meaning a lot, but that's gonna be way too much. But we take our number four, right? We used that earlier, that's the softer one. We still get a secondary shadow, but it's much more smooth. You know, and now we've got nice fill Right, nice smooth, nice, nice smooth fill on the on the owl, without it being all kinds of crazy. Right, so that's the difference there. Nice and easy. Now another thing we could do is we could actually kick some of this light past the owl. Right, so that. We're just giving the owl a bit of a, like, a, like a, a, a tiny bit of light coming across the top of it to give it some three-dimensional shape, separate it from the background. Right? Then, so now we've got it, it's basically silhouetted, but now we can take our, our mirror light and we can fill in that way, right? That's just another way to do it. Come in this way with it. Now we've got like like horror lighting, right? From underneath. It's like, oh. And I can feather it off to just give it a little bit if I want to give it some texture. Part of the reason why this mirror has such good texture is because it's dirty. So I recommend never cleaning your, your mirrors. Right? Now we're hitting it with this hard light that's giving some texture. I might even actually give it a little tiny bit more exposure. I'm just going to open up to 5.6. Right? Now we've got, again, I'm using a mirror, right? So even though uh, this, this mirror is actually bigger than the, the, the data light, right? 
it, it in a sense it's hard it's a uh, softer but all i'm actually getting when it's a pure mirror like this is i'm getting a reflection of the source which is then small because it's a reflection right so that's why this actually is still punchy in fact it's even harder than the original light in a way you can see that by looking at this shadow look look at that shadow edge so this is actually a hard light. And again, I could do the same thing with the softer one. And this is the reason why it's cool to have different uh, types of uh, surfaces. You know, I could fill in the owl with the soft light. Probably gonna have to give it a little more exposure. No, not really. Okay, there you go. Now he's filled in with the soft light, right? And we can see that this, this shadow edge is softer now. It's still punchy, but it's soft. Yeah, so we could do that. And that's good if you're gonna like, let's say light the candle, right? Because if you wanna light the candle, you want dark behind it. Oh, my watch just restarted. So that's that's good. Uh, oh. oh, my picture and picture is being blocked. Okay, hold on. You can you can look at me as a shadow, a silhouette. All right, I guess I'm gonna put it over here. Then it was just blocking that close focus thing. Okay. There we go. Sorry, move myself around. Yeah. Okay. Cleveland. Yeah, the mirrors are actually really cool. So this whole system is really nice. There's different levels of it, but you could basically just get different types of reflectors. Like you've seen Seth make the Brooklyn reflectors with tinfoil, similar. You know, it's not gonna have as much punch. I moved it in closer for that one. I feel like I should light this candle. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna walk off the set for a second. If you see me run, that means that's me going for the fire extinguisher. Let's see, let's do this. It's gonna burn bright for a second. I probably should have trimmed it first. Okay, there we go. Oh, you guys didn't even see all the action. There he is. All right, let's do this before it burns down too much. Now, if you're gonna light a candle Right? Now we got it. Now we got the candle burning, right? So even with the hot light, I can do that. Um, it's just a matter of balancing the exposure. I'm actually gonna swing this sideways more. Okay, let's go like this. You guys can see it. So again, I don't want it to look overly lit because it's, if it's, a, it's a candle, right? Like if you want it to feel like the candle is lighting itself, then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually use the mirror to, to kick back light the way we want it, but we're gonna to try to make it look as real as possible, make it feel like, you know, uh, it could be lit by the candle. Clearly it's not. I mean, anybody, any photographer is gonna look at it and be like, oh, I saw what you did there. But, you know. Yeah, there we go. So now it feels like it's being lit by the candle, even though it's clearly not. The candle itself is not doing that much at all. If we were to kill this light, now we're gonna go dark for a second. Right, that's just the candle, right? So there's the candle, right? Oh yeah, that's how you shoot a candle, that's beautiful, right? But the thing is, we're giving it some life, right? Because we are bringing in light that we feel like works, that creates the mood that we want. And again, if I hit it with too much light, it won't look real. It'll look like it's lit. You know, if we just smack it with light. Like that. Like that doesn't look like the candle's lighting it anymore, right? That looks like it's lit. And this is really what it comes down to. You wanna kind of think about how the light looks from the candle and then just make it better. This is the place you got your power supply? All right. <laughs> uh, like for a computer? <laughs> I need a power supply. Stop breathing the flame bouncing around. Yeah, I know. The flame has to bounce. That's part of the, uh, here. I'm waving at it now. Got to have the dancing flame, right? All right, well, that's, I didn't burn down the house. That's always good. Oh, oh. There you go. That's how you shoot smoke. I probably should have been ready for that, but 
There you go. Smoke. No Photoshop required. The trick to shooting smoke is just have it be backlit. You know, so there you go. That's what that's how you get smoke. I should have done it simultaneously. All right, well, that's all right. These are regrets that we have. Oh, actually, I can see it in the light, but of course you guys can't see that. So, all right. Cool. All right, that was fun. Let's bring the compass back. If I can find it again. All right. Let's create something a little bit more interesting, I think. All right, let's kind of come out of this with a, a shot that we think is really cool. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come back. Oh, actually, you know what we're going to do? First, I'm going to put this on there. This, this could really, but this could be bad, guys. So we'll see. Well, we'll I'll, I'll, you'll find out in a second. This is the projector. So the projector is going to let us, um, I guess you can see me down there. Um, it's going to actually create, I mean, one thing I can do is create like a very small, tight circle. So if we want to really light something up. But the other thing it's going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to uh, put in various types of gobos to create shape of light. So let's see what we got here. I've got one. Let's try this guy. So let's just drop this guy in. He's already loaded up. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Oh, that's very interesting, actually. I don't know if it's interesting for this, but it's interesting overall. So let's take a peek at this guy. Let's do something like we did before. Okay, so clearly this is going to be more difficult, right? Because the lines are going the wrong way. So now I might actually tip this this way. And let's create I'm going to come back up on the tripod so I can look down on it like I did before. This could be very harsh, but let's just start here and let's see what we can create. So what's important to me, right, is the name. So I'm gonna move, I'm gonna leave this, the, the composition where it is and I'm going to move the light. So I wanna get that name in there. The other thing I can consider is whether or not I want more light kind of coming around it or if I want it to be at the edge of the light, right? Cause I could have it like, like that, which might actually be more interesting. Let's do that. Okay, let's try that. Wondering if this is the best gobo, but we're gonna go for it because that's what we got going. All right, let's see what we got. Oh yeah, look at that, right? Now we're creating some. Now, of course, this is very, very contrasty and dark. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to get away with just one light here, but I'm gonna try because We might need to use a second light only because of where everything's coming from. This will brighten it up, but it's not going to give us the contrast we want. So, as we say around here, the more lights you use, the more you get paid. I do have another data light, but I'm not going to use that because I also have this guy. This is a little baby uh, savage. I don't know what it's called. It's called a savage... Uh, Pocket RGB video light. So this is a little baby LED. So I'm just going to take this and use, this is dimmable. I have it set on tungsten right now for the white balance. And it's, I'm just going to bring it in. And let's see what we can do, right? So I, I brought it and you can see it there, right? So that's without it. That's with it. 
So I'm just going to bring it up to where I think it's good, and we're going to take a shot. Ah, that's not bad, right? Now we're getting some detail in here. Okay, I'm digging on this. A couple things I don't like, or that I want to change. So I've got, this is a, I don't even know how you'd be able to see this. Oh, you can see it. This is a half scrim. So what a half scrim does, it's basically a piece of net that only covers half the circle that you see there. It's gonna knock the amount of light down on part of the frame, the part, basically the part of frame that, that's closest to the, to the light. So I'm going to, of course I just moved the light so I'm gonna have to reframe it again. All right, I'm gonna, actually they're pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna drop this in, put the light where I want it. I'm gonna drop this in and it should make, there we go. It's gonna make that light to the left of the frame a little bit less prominent which is gonna be good for me. Let's see what that did. Oh yeah, there we go. That looks great. I, the LED light is here, it's filling in. I kind of want it to be a little higher. It did come with a little stand, but I don't know where it is. Uh, it's at 3200 Kelvin, so it's matching the light. I'm just gonna bring it up, it's at 10% now, I'm gonna bring it up to 20. So I will double the amount, that might be too much. But the reason why I'm bringing it up so much is because I'm going to move the light further away so it can spread out more. Yeah, there we go. That looks pretty good. I might give it just a smidge more. So now I'm going to go up to 30%. That might be too much, but let's see. There we go. Right? Just filling in a little bit at a time. Now we're getting some detail here. I still can't see the name Stanley that well. I think if I want to see that, I'm going to have to adjust my light again, my, my original light. So let me do that. Let me just quickly check here to make sure that we're still functional because my monitor died, so I can't tell what's going on. Uh, I think I'm good. Oop. What are the reflectors I'm using? They are called uh, Lightstream by Dato Light, and they have little holders on the back um, that go on to a, a, a 5 8 So you can put them on C-stands and stuff. A different grid, yeah. Yeah. Do I have a skull? <laughs> I do not have a skull, unfortunately. Uh, I have stars. I have a window. Yeah, I don't think I have anything nautical. Let me see. I might have a better window, though. Let's see. Oh. Take a quick look at what I've got. So, basically, the way the gobos are, they're like these... Um, So you've got all these gobos, right? They're basically different shapes. So I could, I have hearts. It's just like Lucky Charms. Yellow moons. I think I'm going to work with the one I have. Um, this one is actually, what I might do though, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to defocus it, because I think I want, because when I defocus it, it's going to actually make the spot where I, where I want it to be wider. And I'm going to just turn. No, actually, I don't think I need to. I think that did it. So before I do anything else, I'm just gonna take a shot. There we go. Okay, so I defocused the light, right? Which then made it um, uh, spread out, basically. I'm gonna change my composition slightly. I'm just gonna move the camera. Because at this point, moving the whole set would just be silly. I want it to kind of, you know, you, I'm basically going with, um, you've got this basic repetition of form, and I want to kind of have it pull in from one corner to the other. I'll leave some darkness at the top. All right, so, oh, once again, I didn't show you the picture. There we go. Okay, so I'm, I'm moving the camera now. Basically, this is what we've got. I'm going to move the camera. Oh, actually, I can do this. Yeah, so you see I've moved the camera slightly to get the, the, the product into the slightly different part of the frame. I like that, like, one-third dark at the top. I like the way these things fall off as, like, kind of bricks. That's nice and sharp. I think the exposure is good, so let's take a shot. Yeah. Yeah. Now we can read that, right? We've got this kind of interesting pattern that's kind of like, I don't know if it's light coming through a window. Let me see if there's a better one for that. I have, like, blinds for, like, noir, but I feel like that's too on the nose. Huh. 
Let me see. <laughs> okay, hold on. This is not good, but I'm going to show you anyways because it's funny. I mean, you can do all kinds of stuff with this. This one happens to be a, a star. Oh, actually, I kind of didn't put it in correctly, so it's like a little off, but huh, that's actually kind of interesting. <laughs> it's not as dumb as I thought it was going to be. You know, obviously, if they do like that, it's too much, but kind of spread out. It almost looks kind of like a raggedy hole, but we're not going to do that. Let's do a quick switcheroo here. So that's, this is the one I was using. I'm going to switch it for maybe the window. Or actually there's, yeah, I think, I think I'm going to do the window. I'm going to switch it for the window. Let's see if that's better. I have a feeling it's not going to be, but I like the more organic ones personally. But, you know, everybody has their own style. And, of course, if you're ever going to do anything noir, you got to have a window. We did a great noir video with Dave at one point. Yeah, I know. Yeah, this just became, like, kind of dumb. Okay. <laughs> well, let's try it. Never say never. Let me change the focus. If we're going to do noir, we should... No, that's bad. How about wide? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, we can see now it's focused like that. You can actually see the, the, the marks from the scrim inside. That's kind of neat, actually. Nah. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. There we go, guys. I'm going back to where we started. Actually, I'm going to skip that whole thing. We're done there because I think ultimately... This shot here is it, you know, this one here where we got the, uh, there we go. Everything's in focus. We've got some fill. It all kind of looks good. Um, let me, in, now instead of that, let's do a quick uh, shot of the compass with just using barn doors. Cause that, you know, not everybody's going to have a projector and the barn door is kind of cool because if you don't have a barn door, what you could actually use like pieces of cardboard just to like shape the light. Cause what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make what's called a slash. And the slash is always fun because essentially what it's gonna do is just give you that ability to just cut the light out and have it come in a patch, right? So I've got the slash going across now and I can, you know, it's like a searchlight and I can put it wherever I like. So the closer I, I, the more I raise it, the more I kind of create that where you can see the edge of the light. But there's another benefit to me doing that. If I raise the light up a bit like that, so that the slash is going past the subject, what I get is more light to kick back. In fact, you can, that's my hand reflecting, right? You can see the warmth of it. So if you want to be able to reflect, you got to give yourself light to reflect, right? So I can now bring my light in here and fill that shadow in if I want, right? It just makes it a lot easier to deal with if you're going to do that. I got to focus. Cool. What I think I might actually do here, though, I might just do that part of the compass. Let's. It's a little dirty. So let me wipe it off. I probably should bust out the Windex, but yeah. Let's just do that part. I think it could be interesting just to show this part of the compass because I, I feel like there's a lot going on here inside the compass. Oh, oh, it's off its, there we go. Now, of course, because of the angle of the light, inside the compass is gonna be partially dark, right? And what we can do is we can control, like we can actually change our light to get more inside the compass lit up, or we could have less. What I'm gonna do is come down on it so we see more. So I like that. And I think I'm gonna leave, at least to start, I'm gonna leave a decent amount of shadow in there and just see what we, what we get. You know, again, I'm just doing a test shot just to get a basic idea. Okay. Now, what we could do here, yeah, I feel like with, without the top, it's not as interesting, right? 
So that's kind of cool. Or we can go this way, which is what we did before. And we had switched it. So let's do that. I think we like that. And what we're going to do is get some light inside the compass by raising our hot light up and tipping it down. Right? So kind of the opposite of what we just did. Now, again, we can use the, the bottom of the barn door, or I can even spin it this way if I want to create different shapes. Maybe I'll do like a kind of a partial slash this way. So we're getting it inside. Yeah, let me do that. Let me show you guys what that looks like through the camera. So again, this is what the barn door can do, right? We can change our, the shape of our light to have it come from whatever direction we like. So I'm leaning towards closing this part up and tipping it that way. I kind of like the idea of that dark edge with the other side. I think I'm going to pinch this in nice and tight. Go like that. Yeah, because I like that hard shadow inside. It's like I think of a compass, I think of like being outside in the sun, you know? So I kind of want that like hard shadow edge. So the main part of my exposure is going to be inside the compass. You know, basically it's going to be in here. And you can see that that's like a good proper exposure, right? The rest of it is, that's a reflector, so we'll take that out for a second. And let's come in here. I will focus there. We're probably going to do what we did before though and close down the lens because I think what's going to happen here is we're going to end up with, right, that's going to be out of focus. And I don't think we want that. I think that'll be distracting. So here's where, you know, and again, the discussion of focus stacking came up, but I think we can get enough in focus if I just go to, let's say, F16. I don't want to go too much more than that. Because, you know, at a certain point when you close down your lens too much, it starts to uh, be less sharp. So, yeah, I can read that. That's, you know, now the compass part's slightly out, but I think that's okay. Maybe I'll split the difference. It all comes down to where you're focusing, too. I'm gonna, let me try to focus on the compass part and see what that does. Okay, now that's sharp. Yeah, I'm okay with that. You know, I think what I would actually do is, and I am going to do, I'm going to come into this, because right now I'm kind of a, like a wide angle, fo wide area focus, I should say. I'm going to come in and pick my exact spot, which I think will be right here. And that, I think, will give me what I want. So where I'm focused now is right here. So my actual focus is right here, which is nothing, right? But the reason why I'm doing that is it's giving me the scope that I want. I didn't want this to be super sharp and then that to be out because that to me just looks unnatural. Here with the front of it being in focus, I think it works better. But of course, again, you can focus wherever you like or use focus stacking. I might lower this just a tiny bit more. I'm gonna lower this a tiny bit and I'm actually gonna spin the light around slightly to the side. And this is all just a matter of getting it where I like it. It's all to taste. You know, there's no right or wrong here. Um, yeah, I like that. Now, finally, um, okay, again, once again, I'll come in, focus, and hit shot. I always like to build these things up a little bit at a time. I think that's good, right? You can definitely tell that it's a compass. I like the, the, the bead of light that it's going through. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to try something. too round. Okay, no. If I had a bigger gobo, I might use it there because it's to create a different type of uh, texture because now, now after using the gobo, it feels a little too plain. But I think what we'll do instead is, is bring the mirror back in. We'll bring the mirror in and we will Whack this thing pretty thoroughly with light. But I'm kind of giving just a, I'm hitting just a little part of it. Just to see if I can create something that feels more organic. See, I'm, I'm like hitting it up here, right? Actually, let me try to get it a little lower. 
let's let's get funky guys what would happen if you know i wonder like if you were in let's say a some kind of like a seaside tavern and you uh you know this was just sitting there you know and light was reflecting off glass kind of bouncing around so it's a little imperfect a little unnatural could be kind of interesting huh yeah you know what do one quick thing here guys because now once again it's near the end and i'm just gonna go crazy all right so let me actually do this. I don't, I don't have a thingy to hold this one up, so I'll just go like that. Each of these mirrors is its own light source, right? In a sense. So if I take them and I split it like this, I can actually create almost like the reverse of what I had on the other side. Actually. Be interesting is this. Uh huh. Now again, this is one of those situations where we're going to um, one hundred percent need to come into. Ooh, I just blinded myself to, to come in and cut this thing out, right? Because I can clearly see my. Oh yeah, see how much more organic that looks. So what I'm doing here, guys, is here. Let me. Let me show you. So this this mirror here is actually um, right. You can see I'm blocking. So this mirror is getting light that's reflected off paper over here. But if I put this mirror in, now I'm actually reflecting it off that mirror. So I'm actually getting kind of a double double whammy here. So what I'm actually getting here is this like interesting like because you know in nature light kind of just bounces around naturally. Let me uh. Do one other thing. That's not going to be enough, right? Nope. Okay. So I'm going to take, I do have another holder, but I don't have it with me. So I don't want to leave the set to do it. So I'm just going to take this thing. I'm just, I'm just removing the little holder. And I'm just going to put it down here so that I don't have to hold this in my hand. There we go. Hopefully I haven't lost you all. The stream's still going, right? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you're right. Nikkor uh, 2470. Yeah, what's interesting about foil, too, is that um, you can wrinkle it and stuff. Because, again, this stuff doesn't all have to be so perfectly neat. And that's, that's kind of what I'm getting at at this point, is that we can create um, texture and shape kind of by using it, what would be really imperfect light. You know, what we're doing here is creating something that's got a little bit more of a raw feel to it, which I think can be really interesting for, for product photography in general. Let me do that. Okay. Let me get a better exposure here. Doing a little something different here. I'm going to close down because I'm open up rather. So I don't care about the depth of field at this moment. In fact, I might want to go kind of shallow here. I'm kind of flaring my lens a little bit. Because I'm kicking this mirror back up at me. And what, what's actually happening here, guys, is... The, let me do this one first. The, the light itself is actually bouncing off of this mirror that's over here, hitting this mirror, then coming back at the lens. Yeah, oh, now I'm really fogging the lens. Okay. That's definitely a lens flare. But it's creating this really kind of weird soft look because I'm getting a flare. I'll try one other thing. Oh, yeah. 
So that's kind of interesting, right? Because what I'm actually getting here, and we talked about this earlier, is now my light source is reflecting off the compass, which, you know, is probably not what you always want, but you see I'm getting this lens flare? Very interesting. I don't think it's what I want, but it's really interesting. Let me kill this. That's just way too much. There we go. It's a little more natural with the light bouncing around. It's really fun to play with, but let's get down to a, a nice clean shot to finish with. Um, what I'm gonna do here is just bounce. I'm gonna come in with the barn door, barn door light, I should say, and I'm gonna bring it low this time. I'm gonna bring it low, but I'm gonna skirt it past my, my product, so it's actually not really hitting it so much. To go to live view so you guys can see it. Okay. So it's just barely, just barely coming in and touching it. I'm going to go. Nice. All right. So where's the number four? I'm just going to bring the number four in and I'm just going to try to do a nice soft touch from over the top. Yeah. And this is going to give us a really clean shot. So I got to figure out my exposure. Let me get my focus. All right, so I'm going to come down to a 5.6. And I'm just going to move my shutter until it looks right. It's about right there. And okay. So we can see here, right, how we're just using essentially reflected light to create what is actually kind of a, a nice kind of punchy feel, right? And with a pretty clean uh, background. Because again, if I point the light directly at it, it's going to be a much more crisp look. So each of them can be really interesting, right? Both, both situations work, right? You can do this, right? And then you can even, you know, you can even fill in. Yeah, just a bit, you know, that's crisper that's gonna give you a nice overall clean look. So it kind of depends on what you're looking for. So yeah, there's a lot of different things here. I could probably do this all night. I actually love doing this, so I'm probably going around in circles, but um, let me just quickly check to see if there's any questions because I see that we're getting late. Uh, let's go here. Like that. Alexa, turn on reading lamp. Made of brass, yeah, I think it is. Uh, what, what have you been thinking? Uh, foil. Yeah, so I think what I'm getting at here, hopefully, uh, I think I've, I've missed anybody's questions. Uh, sorry. Um, you are looking at me, right? Yeah, okay. What kind of my goal here was, was just to kind of show you that you can mess around and play with the different kinds of uh, things that you might just have in your house. And using even a single light, you can... Uh, you can create a lot of different looks. Like, don't feel so confined. I think the first thing people do is they look at that one tutorial, the one that I did on set number 24, where I basically say, you know, you could shoot any product by taking, you know, something like this, right, and putting it right above it and shooting a light through it and it creates a big soft light. It always looks good. It is true, it always does look good. And we did that at the beginning with the softbox, right? We created a nice soft light. But sometimes with product, you want to create something that's more rich and interesting. And I think that having reflections, having shadows, having depth, having it not perfectly sharp all the ways through can give a lot more flavor to your product photography than just blasting it with a soft light, even though that does look good. And I'm not saying one way is right or wrong, but just I, I always look to for these to um, as a way for you guys to want to explore. So hopefully that, that's what this will do. This is actually... This is not a macro lens, no. 
Um, this is my final live stream of 2020. So for all you guys that have been watching, or even if it's your first time, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. We will be back in 2021 with more. Um, as long as you guys keep watching, we'll keep doing them. I really appreciate it. Um, if you're not, or if you are new here and you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to Adorama TV. Uh, we do these now, of course, all kinds of other videos all the time. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, you're watching this after the fact, or if I just didn't get to it in there, and I apologize, I missed it because I was kind of by myself. Um, go ahead, put it in the, uh, a comment, and I'll check it in a couple days, and I can answer some questions. So thanks again, guys. Have a great, uh, you know, holidays are coming up, and uh, be safe. And I'll see you next time.